man right here is my great grandfather. He's the first cat herder in our family. Herding cats. Don't let anybody tell you it's easy. Anybody can herd cattle. Holding together 10,000 half wild short hairs. Well, that's another thing altogether. Being a cat herder is probably about the toughest thing I think I've ever done. I got this one this morning, right here. And if you look at his face, it's it just ripped to shreds, you know? You see the movies, you, you hear the stories, it's... I'm living a dream. Not everyone can do what we do. I wouldn't do nothing else. It ain't an easy job, but when you bring a herd into town and you ain't lost a one of them, ain't a feeling like it in the world. Hello, Greyhat. My username is NeedMoney90, and I'm one of the moderators for the Monero ecosystem. In this talk, I want to discuss my experience moderating in the Monero community over the past four years. This includes the individuals that comprise the community, the tools we use on a day-to-day -day basis, some stories illustrating choices we've had to make, a few controversial topics like shadow bans, and hopefully answering some questions I'm sure many of you have. The community is heavily composed of individuals on the libertarian end of the political spectrum. While this is a fairly broad label, common themes involve individualism, self-determination, free speech, and inherent skepticism towards authority. Maintaining the balance between free speech, the ratio of signal to noise, and user satisfaction at large is a constant tightrope walk that I'm still learning how to navigate today. One of the biggest lessons that I've learned is that moderation is much more about building a culture than it is about visible actions like bans and post removals. And you accomplish this partly by acting the way you want your users to act, and partly through setting and evolving your moderation policy to reflect the desires of your community and the community that you want to eventually appear. Uh, when you have the wrong policies, you'll push the people that you want away, whereas the right policies attract them. Our, our ecosystem has a culture that's distinct from most of the rest of the cryptocurrency space. For the most part, it's comprised of people who are either using Monero or developing for the protocol, as opposed to speculators and traders. One question that I imagine people are asking is, who gets to make the rules in an environment with a heavy focus on decentralization? And the short answer is whoever gets there first. Most popular discussion platforms have a namespace, so think a room, a channel, a subreddit, that assigns ownership to the first person who requests it. That person effectively has the keys to the castle. They and they alone have the sole authority to decide the rules or delegate that authority to other moderators. The long answer takes the community itself into consideration. Discussion platforms are nothing without participants. In a way, a sort of social consensus process is constantly occurring. When rules are enforced, either through comment and post removal, bans or otherwise, the user often doesn't just disappear. They actively seek out or create places that accept them. It's a cliche at this point, but if you don't like the way one of those forums is moderated, you can always create your own. Our ecosystem is like a series of islands, and the core ecosystem has many bridges between those islands. If you feel strongly enough about changing the way things are done, and you can attract enough people to your platform, that platform becomes a part of the Monero community, whether the other platforms like it or not. Despite the need for an individual to take the head mod role, the people in that position on our various channels have, for the most part, abdicated their power in favor of a flat moderation hierarchy. On a day-to-day -day basis, no consultation is really needed for routine moderation like spam control, but when a potentially controversial action is going to be made, we discuss how we feel about the issue and vote on the outcome. This can either be a majority vote or unanimous, depending on what's being discussed. If the decision is going to have larger ramifications, we ask the community for their opinion, and this serves two purposes. It gives us some insight into how the demographics have shifted over time since people are constantly coming and leaving, and it also gives us a data point that we can reference in the future when questioned as to why the rules are the way that they are. A recent example of this happening was on the XMR Trader subreddit, which ironically has historically been populated primarily by non-traders who just want to talk about the price. In the past, pictures of charts with lines on them, otherwise known as technical analysis or TA, were seen as spammy and not worth keeping on the front page. 
We've had a rule for nearly four years now that requires people post their TA in the sticky daily thread. This month, after removing multiple charts from the front page, I made a poll to gauge community sentiment and see if the demographics had shifted. I actually expected the community to vote strongly in favor of keeping them off the front page, but it ended up being the opposite. Our trader community had grown to the point that the previous generation of community members was now in the minority. Right now I'm deciding on when to remove the restrictions on TA posts, and I honestly expect that the reaction a few months down the line will be to remove them again, but it appears that the subreddit is going to be changing its policies. The Monero community has many different places of discussion, all with their own sort of culture. Often, these discussion platforms have multiple different Monero communities, all with drastically different policies. Notably, the trading and mining sub-communities have their own personalities that are noticeably distinct from the core-controlled IRC channels and the Monero subreddit. Some of the Monero subreddit policies were created in response to observing other cryptocurrency subreddits and attempt to head off issues that we see as preventable. Notable examples of those policies would be redirecting posts about particular topics to their own special purpose subreddits. Memes and shit posts go to Moonero. Doom and Gloom goes on Doomero. Price talk in general gets moved to XMR Trader, and support threads are redirected to Monero support. The existence of these tertiary subreddits has dramatically reduced the amount of noise on the front page of the subreddit, leaving the bulk of this space available for news and protocol discussion. I want to talk a bit about Freenode, which is the largest internet relay chat, also known as IRC server around. IRC was one of the first real-time chat protocols on the internet, and the operators of those services have a lot of accumulated wisdom about how to moderate text-only conversations. The Freenode channel guide provides a great metaphor called channel temperature that's a critical tool that I use on a near daily basis. The channel guide reads as follows. IRC is a low bandwidth method of communication in comparison with physical presence. Many of the cues of physical communication, like tone of voice, facial expression, hand movements, etc., are missing in IRC, since only text is transmitted back and forth. Speakers in physical proximity with each other communicate quite a bit of emotional context via this extra bandwidth. This context enables them to avoid misjudging the intent of their conversational partners. It also functions as an unconscious negative feedback mechanism to reduce the incidence of emotional firestorms, which tend to disrupt the efficient flow of conversation. Human beings look for this feedback, and indeed they may have evolved to require it. In the low-bandwidth world of IRC, they must instead rely on emotional feedback from the text that they receive. And this process is subject to exaggeration. Small amounts of emotion become magnified in the perception of the observer, so it's very important to keep channels calm. An informal, conceptual measurement of the emotional content of a channel is its channel temperature. Think of a person's emotional state as kinetic energy. Enthusiasm, happiness, anger, and frustration all add to the energy level. The more emotion that's experienced, the hotter the participant is. The average emotional state of a channel is its temperature. Emotions in IRC become exaggerated, and conveying them directly increases channel temperature. Pent-up frustration in particular is often released as a series of inappropriate, high-energy outbursts. An important objective of the Freenode channel guidelines is to avoid feedback loops in channel interactions by reducing the channel temperature. Temperature is a very relatable way of looking at social interactions, in my opinion, and usually the moderators will stay out of respectful conversation that may not strictly be on topic, but it isn't hot. When there are occasions where discussion does get hot, we intervene either by defusing the situation if it's possible, or either removing it or locking the thread if it's not. Another more controversial tool that moderators use is called a shadow ban. Regular bans inform users and prevent them from posting on a forum, and in this case it's a subreddit. Shadow bans are different. They don't inform the user, but they allow them to continue posting while their comments are silently removed and placed in a moderation queue. 
One use of shadow bans is to allow moderators to isolate problematic users, like people who are providing significant amounts of unnecessary heat in the channel, for a future review before making a final judgment on how to handle their case. Another use is when the forum is under active attack by people attempting to evade the filter for whatever reason, the advertisement being a big one. If the alt accounts were informed that their presence was noticed, they would quickly move to another username and continue. On the Monero subreddit, I would describe my moderation as fairly lazy. Uh, I like to automate things when I see patterns. Other moderators like Debrun are willing to brute force their way through every single thread every single day, and I do not understand how they're able to do it. He's an absolute machine. Um, my contributions have primarily revolved around identifying different keywords that people use when they're referring to particular issues and using those keywords to redirect threads to the places that they need to go. By doing this, I've significantly reduced the amount of effort that's required to moderate the subreddit. Automod does most of the work in moving things to places that they actually need to go. This keeps the other moderators happy so that they're actually able to continue doing their jobs without burnout. The Monero community is very developer heavy, and we often custom create a lot of the tools that we use in our ecosystem. Uh, one thing that's being worked on at the moment is a support bot for the Monero support subreddit. The bot is being built with the ability to let community members take responsibility for particular support requests so that we can better organize both people who need help and people who want to provide it. In a couple weeks, that should be live, and we'll see if it manages to make a dent in the huge flood of support requests that we've received in the past couple months. One question that gets asked occasionally is how people become moderators. Other than being the original creator of a channel, the process is generally pretty opaque. This is because the people who tend to actively seek out moderation positions or positions with power in general tend to be the wrong people to have in those positions. For our channels in particular, when we get lucky enough to find an individual who both understands the existing culture and actively contacts us when they see issues they want dealt with, we'll often extend an invitation. Those individuals have already demonstrated that they are aware of what content is appropriate and what is not, and they tend to be fantastic fits. One thing to note, none of our community moderators are paid. All of us do this as volunteer work because we actually think that this is a cause that's worth putting our time into. In addition to that, pretty much every one of our chat mediums and forums has a head moderator that is a different person. We don't have the same people who are at the heads of all of our different areas. This is a particularly good thing for decentralization because when an issue happens in the community, you have to convince the other moderators that something has gone wrong and that they need to fix it as well. Uh, it makes it difficult for individuals to censor things across the entire environment because there are multiple places that they can go that have other people that are able to examine the problem. That's not to say there aren't people who have moderator privileges across many parts of our ecosystem, but they are kept in check by the other moderators who have the ability to look at the logs and actually see what's going on. I'd like to close out my talk by discussing how you can get involved with the community if this sort of environment seems like something you want to participate in. Other than Reddit and IRC, the Monero community extends to many other venues. Uh, these include Discord, Telegram, Twitter, GitHub, Mattermost, Matrix, Stack Exchange, and more that I'm forgetting right now. Depending on your skill set and disposition, different platforms will suit you better. If you're a developer, you can use GitHub. If you're mathematically oriented, the Monero Research Lab is the place to go. Do you prefer real-time chat? Go for IRC, Telegram, Matrix, or, Meta uh, or Mattermost. Is real-time chat too much of a drain on your attention? Reddit or Stack Exchange may be better suited to you. While stubbornly individualistic at times, the Monero community is filled with some of the most intelligent and driven people that I've had the privilege to work with in my life. Like the cat herders in the video at the start of my talk, I wouldn't rather be doing anything else. Thank you for your time, and I hope you enjoy the rest of Grey Hat.